It's Apple announcement day. I've got a super busy day today, but I'm gonna still try to watch the keynote and do my annual, should you upgrade, advice. What the heck? It's a little weird because when you set up an Apple Watch and the ECG and it's like, this will not detect a heart attack, but then they play this video that's like, the Apple Watch saved my life, it detected a heart attack, like, but they warn you that it doesn't do that. Like, it feels a little untruthful. That being said, I think if you're at risk for a heart attack, it's a great way to like, keep tabs on your health. Please, by all means, if you can afford an Apple Watch, it's a great tool for that, but you know, don't, don't make it your only thing, indication for a heart attack. Now at JSA to act in a short little PSA for the Downtown Fresno Partnership. Here's the fit. I guess I'm supposed to be wearing a lab coat, white lab coat on top of this. Pretty cool, I was wearing my hat and it left an indention in my head. Down at JSA, I uh, recorded a quick couple lines about downtown Fresno and I can't keep my Pelican case straight. I took my Pelican to show Roger and Josh my R5C. Uh, now it's too dang hot, I'm gonna put my shorts back on and do some more work at CMAC. Okay, I'm back home because it is way too hot outside to just like think or do anything. So um, here's the moment you've all been waiting for. Should you upgrade? The question people ask me after every iPhone announcement. Let's go in order. Apple Watch Series 8. I think it's going to be the Apple Watch that you get if you want a new Apple Watch, because as soon as stores sell out of Apple Watch Series 7, it's all you're gonna have. Um, it adds a temperature sensor. That's cool, I guess, especially if you're trying to have a baby. I know a lot of people who can have babies are removing their fertility information due to privacy concerns, so, not a huge deal. The new crash detect stuff seems cool. The watch thing that's most interesting to me is the SE. It seems to be an Apple Watch Series 6, plus a couple of the nice new features from the Series 8, like the new sensors and crash detection. I think the new SE is going to bring a lot of people into Apple Watch who haven't had one before. The SE doesn't feel nearly as crippled as it used to. And then the Ultra. The Apple Watch Ultra is humongous. And all Apple really needed to say is it's got 36 hours of life and 60 hours if you use it in low power mode. And I think it's gonna sell a ton. Now there's added GPS functionality, scuba diving functionality, all kinds of cool stuff to go after folks that are considering a Garmin and more power to them. But I think there's gonna be a ton of people who are just like, I want that big battery, give it to me. And you know what? I can't fault them for that. Having an Apple Watch really requires creating a routine uh, in your morning or at night to keep it charged and keep it going. And if you don't want that, then this is the watch for you. Of course, there's all kinds of other watches, but you know, if you want an Apple Watch. The new AirPods Pro look great. It's hard to say how they hear from a video. I'm sure they sound better than the last ones. My real big hope is that connectivity is more solid. I'm really interested to see how well that H2 chip connects and stays connected. But there's also some small quality of life things that are really nice. The built-in speaker for when you can't find the case for your AirPods Pro and the lanyard hoop. Great additions to help prevent losing them and to help prevent needing a bulky kind of case just to keep it on a lanyard. And then there were the stars of the show. New iPhone, rest in peace, iPhone mini. The iPhone 14 looks nice, the camera upgrades look great, and the satellite connectivity for emergencies, A+. I think that's great. Who do I think the iPhone 14 is for? I think it's anyone who's been using an iPhone 11 or older. The last two years of the boxy design are here to stay. And if you don't like it, it seems like you're gonna be stuck with it. But I personally really love the boxy design. And I think if you've been making it work with an iPhone 11 or earlier, that's awesome. But I think you're gonna feel some really good performance upgrades and the new camera is probably gonna blow you away. And the plus size is back. I think the iPhone 14 plus is for anyone who wanted a big phone, but didn't necessarily wanna go pro. And it looks like they're keeping the iPhone 14 Plus price under even the standard size pro. So I think that's gonna capture a lot of people. Bigger screen, bigger battery, but everything else is pretty much the same as the 14, I think. It's probably gonna sell really well. And then the thing that I'm debating is, 
Should I get an iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max? I really like the purple color. I really like the purple color. But I'm gonna try to live with my iPhone 13 for another year. I'm still really happy with this phone. The camera upgrade on the main camera is nice. It's also very cool that cinematic mode is in 4K now. And I'm pretty sure it finally has 24 frames per second instead of the inexplicable cinematic 30 frames per second. And the satellite for emergencies and the crash detection are cool, but, but one, I'm hoping I'm not gonna find myself in a situation where I need satellite. And two, I'm really going to try not to get into any car crashes. And even if I do, hopefully my watch doesn't break. I can still make a call from my watch to get some emergency services. Who do I think should get the iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max? I think that's anyone, again, with an iPhone 11 Pro or earlier. The camera was a big jump from the 11 to 12, and even the 12 to the 13, I think going from the 11 to the 14 is gonna be a really big upgrade, and a three-year jump in processing power is gonna make the phone feel real snappy for you. All this said, if you are happy with the devices that you have, if they're doing the job that you need them to do and you do not have complaints about them, do not spend your money. Spend your money only if you need something new. I am all for trying to make the stuff that you have last for as long as possible. And that's why I'm gonna try to hang on to my iPhone 13 Pro Max for another year. Anyway, that's my thoughts on this year's iPhone event. I hope it was helpful for you in deciding what you should do this year. And if it was, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna hear me talk more about technology and cameras and phones and join me on some fun adventures, hit subscribe. And I will see you later. Peace. Shoo.